What is up fellow bench warmers? Welcome to your daily fantasy quick. What's up guys? It's week 11 judgment day. Welcome to another quickie with your host JJT and Komish, Komish Eric. Um, yeah, it's week 11 judgment day like I said and hopefully you guys had a good week 11 somehow i i, I just feel somehow that the um covid thing settled a bit towards the end of the week and with lots of players coming back as well so hopefully they were able to salvage your week komish how are you how was your week um yeah i think i lost to you in the champions league that's I got lucky probably- yeah, that's my that's my only loss I think for this oh. week. So 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 it it was good because I think my opponents got a lot of injuries and uh, players out also. So I got lucky in that that sense. They got yeah, more. Some, yeah. Sometimes luck plays a big part, uh, especially in these times. And yeah, I also got lucky in a few leagues wherein I was trying to catch the eighth spot at least get there closer to the playoff uh yeah and so far i was uh someone asked me how many teams uh so far i have in the playoffs i think joa was the one who asked me so far so far so good i have i'm managing 14 teams um yeah and so far only two are out of the playoffs and one is the invitationals uh but a lot i have a lot that's hanging on to that seven, six, eight spot. So uh, hopefully I get lucky in a few of those leagues. All right, let's get on with a quickie. Um, COVID, again, a, a quiet day, I guess. Caris Levert got into COVID protocol. So that gives Justin Holiday a big boost. Yeah, Justin Holiday, and then they have this guy, uh, Duan Washington. Uh, they just signed him and he has been playing starting for them the past two two games. So I think those two players, as long as I think uh, Kellen Martin is also in COVID protocols. Uh, we know that Duarte is in COVID protocols. Brogdon, Brogdon is, is in out. COVID protocols. So is so he Indiana in COVID has, protocols? Right? I think he's yeah. injured, right? He, he, no, no. He's also in COVID protocols. Okay. He's injured and then he's also in COVID protocols. The the perfect combo. Yeah. So so they have eight players in COVID protocols, and most of them are guards, the guards or the one, two, three spots. So that opened up players, minutes to players like uh, as I said, Washington, and then um, Justin Holiday. Justin yeah. Holiday. Um, Sabonis had a great day today. Uh, Thirty-two points, thirteen rebounds, and seven assists. So I would also guess, you know, Turner and Sabonis would get a bump in their usage mm-hmm. without Levert. Uh, it's unfortunate because Levert has been playing really well over the past few games, past few weeks, a couple of weeks now. Um, he's been. But what we're seeing also is that some players are coming out less than five days. Some some players are out in three days, three games, three days, not games, three days. Some players four. Some, so, so so there's some you know possibility that maybe they can come out right away maybe these days being in protocols doesn't mean as much anymore yeah it's not like before when they're in protocols oh no we're, you're gonna be out long now yeah sometimes like jason jason tate for instance and actually jonas balanchunas as we as we talked about him yesterday is already questionable for the next game so that's what i was saying because i think the symptoms had passed already because he had the non-covid part supposedly illness part. I think that was the symptoms part. Yeah. And right now it's just basically getting the negative test. So yeah. so there. Uh yeah, so that, you know, is good news. I'm in a group chat with some of the fantasy bench warmers uh, managers as well uh, in one of the leagues and we're talking about this COVID thing and how it has impacted some of their teams. Uh yeah. And you know, by players, let's talk about some by players. We have some a few Terrence Ross came back. Uh, I think this is his first game back, right? Yes, it was his first game back. Actually, I, I was able to stream him in some leagues. I 
I could have streamed him in every league. It's just that because they have a back-to-back to, yeah. today and tomorrow. But I knew he was coming back. I knew he was going to get minutes. I just didn't expect he was going to get 35 minutes and yeah. still do what he did today. So, so that's a surprise. But we know that Cole Anthony is still out. Um, right? So Orlando would need a lot of scoring. So Ross yeah. can do that. Yeah. And, and and Ross was one of our um, buy recommendations before he got into COVID. I, I mean, literally yes. a day before he got into COVID. So yes, um, he should be able to maintain hope. Well, I was surprised he got 33 points. But yeah, he should be able to keep that. Hopefully, he gets to keep that up. Uh, hopefully, he plays today. I mean, tomorrow. Because, I mean, coming yes, from a long should. layoff. Come on. I just streamed him for tomorrow. <laughs> In for the week, but, but I mean, coming from a long layoff, there's always a possibility they don't push him, yeah, as much. Yeah. And, and like, and um, instead, tomorrow, maybe RJ Hampton is the guy that they play more, uh, yeah, that, that's that's possible. So, like, so there. uh, I think Vanderbilt, one of my uh, I saw he was questionable for today, although he played, but yes. he was questionable despite having played uh, the last game already. so that kind of thing could happen to some of these players who was uh, from the COVID protocol thing. Um, other players, Caleb Martin, we've been pushing for him. He shouldn't be there in your weavers. Um, getting, slowly getting that uh, groove already. Uh, lots of players still out with Miami. Uh, although Kyle yeah, Lowry, lots of players. Lowry, Lowry played already. So uh, there's one one additional body there. Kyle Lowry is another example. Um, he, I don't think he spent five days in COVID protocols. Yeah. It, it seemed less. It seemed, it seemed less. Yeah, Kyle Lowry is there. Um, Tyler Hero is there. Butler is there. But they they don't have Adebayo. They don't have Tucker. They don't have Marquise Morris. So they have a lot of players out. A lot of rotation players out. And Caleb is one of the remaining rotation players in the team. I mean, Omer Yurtseven, it's been so good. I didn't yeah. even put him in the buy anymore. I put him in the trending up uh, list. But yeah. he has been so good. I mean, so he, good. he's probably not a buy anymore for the reason that he's probably yes. rostered already. In your owned. League. Yeah. yeah. Owned. Um, you know, if he's not owned, he, you might be playing in a, what, eight-team league or, or six-team league, right? Uh, but yeah, he, even in an eight-team league, I think he should be owned. Um so far, double doubles. How many straight? Five, six, maybe. Uh, just solid yes, rebounder eight, overall. Yes, eight straight uh, games with thirteen or more rebounds. Yeah, that's that's an unheard of you know streak. And he has he has games where he only scores five points, six points. The today he had twenty two. So so there are games like that. But you know, I'll take the rebounds any any day of the week. I, I'll take that. And he has he's not bad in steals and blocks. He yeah. he he just doesn't give you you know three steals two blocks one steal two blocks. If he gets you steals he doesn't get you block. If he gets you blocks he doesn't get you steals. Usually that's his that's how it has been with him. But he's been giving some defensive stats also. So yeah. you know I, my, my my thing is maybe when Tucker comes back maybe when Deadmon comes back maybe when Markeith Morris comes back maybe he keeps his I don't, I don't know if he's gonna be a starter. But maybe a 20, 25 minute role might be there for him. Yeah. I could see him playing over that one. For yeah, instance. for sure. I mean, um, you know, he's already shown it. Uh, if he doesn't play over that one, lots of fant- fantasy managers would be very annoyed with that. Um, yes. For and sure. And another example is <clears throat> um, Jalen Smith of Phoenix. Yeah. I was just about to talk about yeah. we were just about to talk about Jaden Smith, another double double today. With, with this these replacement players, I don't know. I'm just on top of my head thinking maybe Jalen Smith has overtaken Javel as a backup. Maybe. I'm not saying it will happen. Just just something to to watch out for. So when jo- and the Andre Ayton comes back, Javel comes back. Maybe monitor first one or two games. Let's see maybe what Jalen is showing right now has made the team decide to you know give him more minutes. So that that's that's something to look out for. Do not drop them right away. Maybe just yeah. give them one or two games. 
Um, and also, you, these are Jalen Smith could be one of the players to watch out for towards the end of the fantasy season, especially during the playoffs. Uh, mm-hmm. In case you know Phoenix secures a playoff spot, rests some of their guys in preparation for the playoffs. I think this is one of the guys that you have to remember when that yes. time comes. Uh, yeah. So Jalen Smith, Damian Jones. What's up with Damon Jones? Uh, no, because uh, it's uh, Rishon Holmes is out. Yes, Rishon Holmes is out. We thought that you know maybe Tristan will start, maybe Bagley and Metu will start, but it's Jones who got to start, and he has been talked up by Alvin Gentry significantly. Mm-hmm. He said he earned it, which to be to be fair, with how many games I've watched, uh, how many Kings games I've watched, he's he's just been performing very well in the limited minutes he's gotten. He's always performed well, but he doesn't get minutes. So they gently said that he earned the starting position. And if he continues to start while Holmes is out, he's a must add. I don't know how, how long Holmes will be out, but for as long as Holmes will be out, Damian Jones should be uh, added yeah, uh, for uh, the Kings. Well, Holmes has been out for too long, hopefully not too long uh, this time. Yeah. Uh, um, and for in case you know we've talked about the Memphis schedule this week, uh, great schedule um, for Memphis with five games. I've added some Brandon Clarks out there in some of mm-hmm. my teams. Um, yeah, we uh, and there's a we, yeah, there's really not there's much a situation there. right now. Kyle Anderson is in COVID protocols also. Yeah. So um, as far as tomorrow is concerned, I'm sure Dylan Melton and Kyle Anderson will not be ready for that. John Conchar will also be out. They waived Sam Merrill. So they're ba- basically, I don't know, who will, who will they start at the three? I, I'm not too sure. Maybe Zaire Williams. I'm not sure if Zaire Williams is in COVID protocols also or not. But I feel like Brandon Clark and Tyus Jones, these two players, um, could they could play small. Yeah, they could play small and play Bain three, Tyus and Moran, one and two. So that's possible. Or they can play big and put Clark at a small forward. So that's also possible. So I think with five games, you can't really go wrong if you know if they don't yeah. perform well. At least I mean, it's a back-to-back to start the week. If they don't perform well on the first game, uh, maybe observe first the minutes they played on that first game. Um, if they got the minutes on the first game. And then maybe just wait Till they finish the back to back, if they don't perform, then you can mm-hmm. you know change your streamer to a different player. You, similar to how Obi Toppin was, uh, first game was a dud. Mm-hmm. Today was good. I mean, the minutes will always be there. It's just that on the first game he didn't perform as well. Today he had nineteen six and six, I think. So plus the and one steal and two blocks. I one think one steal two blocks. Yeah. yeah. So in forty five minutes. Yeah, so I think observe the minutes. Uh, I think Clark is the top add there in Memphis because of the positional thing. He he can play the small forward from time to time. So yeah, should be. And then of course, Tyus Jones would have might get that shooting guard spot. I I think we 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 don't know, but I guess these two players, in case you want that five game. Um, five Memphis games there you can add these yes. two players uh, yeah it's a short list of buy players tomorrow though is a full slate so um, right so I think uh, even if you add Clark you can choose uh, not to play him if your other players are better than him at, at least more safer uh, at least if they are safer players alright let's talk about a few worry players Gary Trent trending down what rank is Gary Trent now? I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's behind Jeff Drew. <laughs> and I don't think, and I don't think it will it, it will even change at this point. Drew is playing very well, and Gary Trent right now, as I said, um, shooting terribly. For one, he's be- below thirty percent, way below thirty percent since coming back from COVID. He was so good with steals early in the season. He has had two in the past four games. So that's point something only a game. So, um, plus today, Scotty Barnes came back, so mm-hmm. they're now complete. And yeah. OG has played sub two. They played big. They're playing 
they're tightening the rotation, but still they have a lot of good players. So if he doesn't score well, doesn't shoot well, he's not gonna get as much usage or opportunities like early in the season or just shoot yeah. and shoot and shoot and shoot. Right now it's not gonna happen for him. So yeah, trending down and I know I know I'll lose the, the bet. Most probably with Gary Trent. Uh yeah, but again, he has a role there. Uh, all he needs is to just make his shots, and I think that's the only thing he really needs to do. Uh, that's his role, right? Uh, unlike the three guys, uh, Barnes, OG, and Siakam, though they have their roles, they are interchangeable in terms of their uh, roles, right? Anyone can play each other's roles. For Gary Trent, there's really no one there uh, who should be shooting as well as him uh, as a spot-up shooter. But, but- I'll reiterate what I said yesterday. I don't like the the depth of the Raptors fantasy wise for us. So if you have OG, if you have Scotty, I, I know I, I would try to see uh, what is out there for these players. Yeah. Um, uh, another worry player, Gordon Hayward. Um, uh, well, yeah, I think he's playing. Um, that's a problem. I don't <laughs> see him playing every game. I don't see him playing every game. And and right now, he's been struggling. Uh, and it's not just been one or two games like Trent or three games like Trent. It's been prolonged. He's been, what, last 10 games maybe. He's had one or two good games and the rest has been bad. And again, similar to Trent, now that they're Miles Bridges back, I'm not sure PJ Washington will be back the next game, but probably, I think he was, he was he's close if he didn't come back today. So there's Melamelo. I mean, the COVID outbreak is done. In Charlotte, everybody's basically gotten it. And and so they're back full health. That's not good for Hayward because he has been very, very passive when everybody's healthy. It's not when everybody's healthy, uh, I think the Hornets go to the player who's hot. Yes. I, I that, think that, that's the, very true. The, the safest guy there in fantasy value is Lamelo, And then for Rozier, Miles Bridges and Gordon Hayward, they will um, alternate good games and bad games. Uh, but unlike players like um, Miles Bridges, for example, even if he doesn't score, he contributes a few more s- categories like the rebounding, the assists, the blocks and steals. For Hayward, though, a lot, uh, a lot of the what you need, you know, is focused on his scoring. I think the point here is, I agree with you, I was going to say that also, that Miles Bridges will basically have value because even if he shoots terribly or doesn't score, he's been able to produce defensive stats this year. He's been yeah. able to assist. He has had yeah. some 8, 9, even 10 assist games this year. So so there's there's that. And uh, the players who are really hurting would be Rose here, Hayward, and uh, Ubre. Because yeah. these players, I mean, as you said, whoever is hot, sometimes Ubre is super hot. Sometimes it's Rozier. And there are times Hayward. Hayward's secondary, you know, strength, like facilitating and and being a ball handler, is kind of, you know, not that pronounced in Charlotte because of Lamelo. Yeah. Because of Lamelo. And then, as, you, as we said, Miles Bridges has also taken taken some part of that. So I think that's that's problem with, Hayward, plus the injury history, of course. <laughs> so, yeah. So uh, that, well, not we, good. you know, for me, I just, you know, we all know the injury history of Hayward. When you picked Hayward, you didn't expect him to play every game. That's why I mm. said earlier, the good thing here is that he's playing. Uh, let's just hope he plays a little better or at least more consistently uh, so that he won't be annoying to own. Let's talk about some feel good. It's going to be a Short, I'll, quick. I'll, add yeah. one, uh, I'll add one more uh, uh, worry. Kemba. I'll put Kemba in that list. Kemba's um, been dropped in a lot of leagues. Now. Again, he was dropping a lot of leagues. And we're going to, maybe tomorrow or later, midnight or early morning, we'll find out what the result of the MRI with his knee is. It doesn't sound good. doesn't look good. But, you know, we, we don't know. We were just all speculating. But it does seem like there's something there. So we know this is trouble. It's troublesome me for him. So if you got him, well, 
congrats on the Kemba Sanity 2-3 game performance during the holidays. But now holidays are over, I think. Uh, his run is also over in New York. And in, because of that, I think Alec Burks, who was yeah. supposed to be a drop already, as we said before, he will be back. As we said, he will be back because Kemba would not be able to maintain what he was doing. And true enough, yeah, it's going to be Burks. It's going to be Burks who would benefit the most here. No, I, I, I kind of regret not picking up Burks and using my waiver priority on him in one of the league because I was thinking about it. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it is what it is. I, I never really, and you know, not really many got uh, tried to pick him up. Uh, that's why one of the lower, lower priority, uh, lower waiver priority guys were, was able to get him. Uh, yeah, but Alec Bridge, if without Kemba, without D Rose, D Rose is out as well. Yeah, yeah it's just it's Alec Bricks, right? I mean, there's no one else they, there. They're... They're starting Miles McBride, but according to Tibbs, that's the only reason he's starting McBride because he wants Burks in quickly on the bench. And that's, that's his, he wants them on the bench because he wants their chemistry. Their, he, he feels that they're better there. But yeah. I mean, I'll take that. I mean, McBride has not been good so far the past few games starting. So, yeah, plus, you know, yeah. who, who do they have off the bench to score? Quentin Grimes. So right, uh, there's really no one there. So, so yeah, maybe that could also be a help. Uh, Alec Burks owner. All right, let's talk about some feel good players. We talked about Year Seven. Fred Van Fleet balled today in his first game back. Yeah, uh, from COVID protocol. Um, no, it's not his first game. It's his second, is it game, second game. It's his second game. Two games though. Game. He said two. Yes. Two good games. Two really yes. good games. Yes. Um, so there. As I said, in Toronto, I trust Van Vliet and nobody else. Yeah. Maybe Siakam. Um, yeah. Uh, it's so interesting that OG, who's one of our the players that we felt could break out this year, is bumped down to like a third string, third option kind of guy. Well, I expected him to be a third option. When Siakam comes back, I did expect that. But what I really didn't see is the emergence of Scotty Barnes. I I felt like Scotty was probably a, se- a season or two away from really yeah. contributing. The same thing with Evan Mobley, who, by the way, had a great game also today. Yeah, I, I felt that this season is you know not yet the season for them. But both of them are top 100. And that's that takes a lot out of OG. That takes a lot out of OG because the rebounds for one, the rebounds. OG had how many rebounds today? Two? Three? Yeah. And yeah, he had four threes. But, you know, if he's going to give you 14 points and three steals, that's, that's not third round value, right? I mean, yeah. it's not third round. So, so... I mean, at yeah. this point, you know, if you compare it, you'd rather have Siakam, who you got on the sixth round, than yeah. OG, yeah, right? Who you got sure. on the third round. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. I mean, it's just disappointing for... OG owners and even for OG himself because you know he's always been a very good potential player fantasy wise every year people expect or kind of have this expectation that yeah it's gonna be OG's year it's gonna be OG's year and this year was supposed to be it but the, yeah, like you said the emergence of Scotty Barnes just you know somehow dampens that uh, emergence that, that, that hope but don't get us wrong. OG will still be for me probably at the at very worst top sixty maybe. I, I think at the very worst he has the potential to be top fifty still. But, he's gonna have good um, games. He's gonna have really yes. good games. And that's it. And that's um, it. Yeah, but he's gonna have good games. It's just not gonna be consistent. Yeah. Um, it's just not and and, consistent. and he and maybe Scotty Barnes would have you know both have good games. What? The, the challenge with OG, Scotty Barnes can facilitate and they've used him to facilitate a lot more. Uh, so that's why Scotty Barnes gets some assist. Uh, and the rebounding is a hustle thing, right? I mean, rebounding, you know, yeah. anyone can get a rebound, but among the among the players of Toronto, but yeah, the, the assist, I think we give that to Scotty Barnes. Uh, because they don't ask OG to facilitate, right? It's Scotty Barnes and 
um, and Siakam, who facilitates yes. among the bigs, right? So yes. that's where yes. the advantage is maybe a little bit for Scotty Barnes, and that's that eats up some of the value of um, OG. But defensive stats should be there. Uh, the steals. Yes, the steals. The steals should be there. The scoring, the scoring could be up and down. Yeah. Like you said. Uh, if it's just yeah. that if if you you had if you had OG for your third round, it's hard to have a part time third rounder, right? I mean, you would expect at least somebody who's consistently gonna yeah. give you the stats. So, yeah, you're so gonna be disappointed in short. I mean, with the yes. numbers or the inconsistency, like how we are disappointed with some of the second rounders or the third rounders that we we got, like players like Fox, right? Uh, how. Yeah. We got disappointed with that. Uh, chances are, but he will probably won't be as bad as that. Um, yeah. OG. Um, yes. But the biggest, you know, the top guy for today is Jalen Brown. I think he's heard us. Yes. What he's heard us. What trade me? Trade me? Yeah. I, I, thank you for doing this today. I'm probably <laughs> going to make it faster to trade you. Um. <laughs> I remember, for me, Tatum is out. That takes... Uh, if if Jalen gets to be the top perimeter option of a team, he can do this. He should be doing this because he's really talented and he's really good. It's just that Tatum takes a lot of usage and kind of plays the same way. Yeah. So so that, that, that hurts him. And given that, given that with this game, maybe it makes it easier to... To trade him, <laughs> that's what. I, that's how I I see this game today. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you have the chance, if for the right value, maybe you would be able to uh, trade your Jalen Brown. All right. Uh, yeah. That's it for our quickie. It's a short quickie. Um, Kamish is uh, enjoying the vacation. Well, I hope he's enjoying the vacation yes. now. I think. Um, but yeah. But. You know, still a lot of uh, things have been talked about. Shout out to JC Jasso. He listened to yesterday's podcast and messaged me about the allergy thing. Um, so <laughs> thank you for um, your recommendations on how. He, I think he's dealing with some health issues as well. I mean, not major. Um, some things that he is uh, dealing with a bit with his family. But yeah, you'll well soon, brother. And uh, yeah. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow in the next Daily Fantasy Quickie. Bye, guys. Bye.